Good morning to you on this Saturday. We continue now with Acts chapter 20, verse 25 um, and 20 through to 27. And now behold, I know that all of you among whom I went about preaching the kingdom will no longer see my face. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. I believe that Paul is probably here referring to um, what God said to Ezekiel when he called Ezekiel and he said, Son of man, uh, if I tell you to um, call people to repentance and you do not tell them about me and they come under judgment, they don't repent, I'll require their blood at your hands. If you do tell them and they, you tell them to repent and they don't, then I won't require uh, their blood at your hands. So the responsibility on us as ministers is to proclaim to you the whole counsel of God and um, to not shy away from the difficult topics of sin and other, and rebellion and other such things. Paul said, I'm innocent of the blood of all men in the sense that he did not shy away from uh, declaring to them the whole purpose of God. He was very honest in his teachings. We know that most of his letters were addressed to different problems that were occurring within the church. He called sin, sin. He called out the problems for what they were. Uh, didn't shrink away from the difficult topics. Paul knew that as Christians, our sole responsibility is to please God. We're not here to please men. He wrote, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? If I was still trying to win the approval of men, I'd not be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the problem with so many churches today and so many ministers, that they are seeking the approval of men. They are scared of speaking the truth in love because they're worried that people will no longer follow them. They don't like the message. Sometimes the things that we have to say to you are difficult. Sometimes we have to point out sin. Sometimes uh, it's not a popular message that we have to bring to you. But our responsibility is to handle the word of God fully, correctly, not shrink away from proclaiming the whole counsel of God. And be it as it may, ultimately our responsibility is towards God and to his word. And ultimately he is the one to whom we will give account. Paul realized that he would never again be coming back to these regions. So he said, I will not see your face again. You will not see my face again uh, in this life. But of course he knew that all Christians will be reunited on that great day when Jesus Christ shall return. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. As we begin this day, we want to thank you for your word. And we thank you that your word covers all things. And help us, Lord, never to dismiss the things that are not pleasing to us or the things that we find uncomfortable. As we preach your word, help us to do so boldly, but to always speak the truth in love. We thank you that the word of God is like a double-edged sword that's very, very sharp and that it cuts deep within and it divides the marrow from the bone and it just gets right into the heart of the matter. We pray, Lord, that you would um, help us to always repent whenever you put your finger on anything that's wrong in our lives. We come to you now generally in repentance, Lord, and ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us and renew us. Father, we want to thank you for your faithfulness uh, throughout the year as this year is now drawing to a close. We thank you for everything. We bless you. We praise you. We look out at a world that is in trouble and we know how much it needs you. So we pray for the souls that do not know you and pray that many would turn to you today. We pray, Lord, for our leaders and those in authority, that you would give them wisdom and understanding and help them to navigate through these times. We pray, Lord, for those who are living under oppression. We pray for those who um, have problems. We pray for the sick, the dying, the poor, the needy, the homeless, the widow. We pray, Lord, for the church. We pray that you would cleanse your church, renew her, send your fire of the Holy Spirit into the church. Shake it up, Lord. Begin with us. Take away all the dross. Take away all the rubbish. And Lord, give us people that are not, not afraid to stand up and say, thus says the Lord, and to proclaim the truth in love always, but to proclaim the truth. Father, help me. Help me to always, Lord, speak your word, your truth, the whole counsel of God, not fearing the consequences. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Apostle Paul. We thank you that he never shied away from saying and writing what you put on his heart. Lord, we surrender all to you. We lift up before you those who have any need whatsoever. And now together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.